morning, everyone. Welcome to this lecture. Today, I want us to look at sampling. But before we go into the substantive issues in sampling, I want us to understand certain terminologies that are generally used in sampling. These terminologies include population, target population, unit of analysis, unit of observation, sample and sample size, sampling, why we do sampling, and the various types of sampling. First, let's understand what we mean by population. In general conversation, population refers to the number of people living in any given area. For instance, in Akuru County, if we say the total number of people who live in Akuru County is 1 million, then the population of Nakuru County becomes 1 million. However, in research, population means a totally different thing. It means the people that the study will focus on, the people that the study will focus its attention on, where the study will collect data to enable it to answer the research objectives. Population here could be human beings or they could be inanimate objects. For instance, if say we want to undertake a study on factors contributing to drug abuse among students in Kenya's public universities, then the focus of this study is students in Kenya's universities. Therefore, the population of the study will be all the students in Kenya's public universities. Assuming that in total, the number of students in our public universities is 100,000, then 100,000 becomes our population. So with that regard, a researcher will now focus to seek information from the 100,000 students to enable him or her answer the issues that he had sought to establish in the study objectives. But again, we also need to notice that it is not possible for a researcher to engage the entire 100,000 students. And therefore, this brings us to what we call the target population and as well as the sample. Target population is now the specific category of individuals within the larger population the study wishes to focus on. For instance, a study might decide and say that it will exclude all first-year students or all second-year students using a criteria that it feels uh, merit, merits have merit. For instance, it might say first years, because they are still new in campus, they may not have engaged or indulged in alcohol and drug to the level that it amounts to abuse. And therefore, on the basis of that, the study might decide to exclude. And therefore, once that is excluded, then we remain with the students in their second, third, and fourth year. And therefore, the students in the second, third, and fourth year becomes our target population. Assuming, for instance, out of the 100,000 students that are in our public universities, those who are in third, rather in second, third, and fourth year is 80,000. Then 80,000 becomes our target population for that matter. Again, further, it's also not possible to carry out a study on the entire 80,000 students. And therefore, a researcher might still decide and say, instead of looking at the entire 80,000 students, I want to concentrate on a portion of the 80,000 students. And in that case, the, 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 the portion that the study focuses on, for purposes of administering the research instruments, that portion of the total population 
is what we call the sample. Therefore, a sample with regard to research is a portion of the entire population that the study wishes to focus on. It is this group that the study will use to administer questionnaire and to use any other instrument that it considers appropriate to enable it to answer its objectives. Then, of course, the question is how many people can constitute a study sample? The best way to arrive at, at a study sample is to use scientific methods so that you avoid questions that might arise as to why, say, you decided on 1,000 and not 1,000. So the best way out is to use scientific methods or scientific formulas that have been developed and approved by uh, scholars and researchers. These formulas will give you an accurate number of the sample that you need to collect to engage in during your study. There are several scientific formulas that students can employ depending on the population of their study. It is therefore up to the researcher and the students for that matter to decide on which formula they consider most appropriate for their study. The sample, when you use these formulas, it gives you a definite number. For instance, 200, 300, 350 and so on. So that specific number that the scientific formula gives you is what we call the sample size. And therefore sample size is the specific number of the, the specific number from the entire population that study wishes to engage. For instance, if you still continue with the example that we have, where we say that our target population is 80,000, then if we use scientific formulas, maybe it gives us 300. So that 300 becomes our sample size. Now, there are other terms that are also used in research. One of them is called unit of analysis. A unit of analysis is simply the people, the groups, or the institutions that the study wishes to focus on. The one the study wants to talk on its behalf. And in this case, if we still follow you the example that we will be using of drug abuse among students, then students becomes the unit of analysis. In other words, the unit of analysis is the group of individuals institutions or any other entity that the study intends to collect data from and present it be its views on those particular issues. That is what we call the unit of analysis. Then there's another term that is close, close related to the unit of analysis, which we call the unit of observation. Unit of observations are the specific items that the researcher uses to collect data. For instance, one of the issues that the researcher could be interested in getting is say the types of drugs abused by students in our public universities. So types of drugs becomes a unit of observation. Another concern of the researcher maybe could be the frequency of drug use among university students. And therefore, the frequency of drug use again becomes the unit of observation. I think we are clear up to that level. Then, of course, we have what we call sampling. What then is sampling? Sampling refers to the process by which a researcher selects a given sample from the entire study population. So the entire processes that a researcher employs in arriving at a given number that now it focuses on in terms of administering such instruments, that entire process is what we call sampling. We'll see later on that sampling are of different types, but broadly there are two broader types of sampling. Of course, that will be a discussion at a later time. I want 
as to pay our attention, as to why we undertake sampling. Why do we undertake sampling? However, a point of note is that we do sampling when the population that we need, that the population of the study is fairly big. However, if the population of the study is small, for instance, assuming we want to carry out a research on public universities with regard to seeking the opinions of vice chancellors on how they have adjusted in managing the COVID-19 so that it does not adversely affect learning. And therefore, we say that we are going to use all the vice chancellors in the public universities. Assume the total number of vice chancellors is 50. Then we now say and decide that 50 is a small number that we need not to pick a portion of it. Instead, we need to use the entire population of the vice chancellors. In that case, we will administer research instruments to the entire list of the vice chancellors. So in this case, we are using all the vice chancellors. If a research decides to use the entire population, that process we call it census. So census is when a study enlists the entire population for purposes of data collection or administration of the research instruments. However, if we wish to pick a portion of that entire study, rather of, of, of the population or part of our study, then we use now the process that we call sampling. Perhaps we need to turn our attention as to why we undertake sampling. First, we undertake sampling because it saves time. For instance, if we use 300 students in public universities instead of the 100,000, it is easier in terms of time to collect data from 300 students instead of the 100,000. So the reason why we undertake sampling is also to save time during our research. Collecting data in the entire population can be extremely laborious and therefore it is easier to get information from a portion of the entire population. Secondly, we also use sampling or we undertake sampling research to save resources. Research is an, ex uh, is an expensive enterprise. It needs money, it needs people, and it needs other resources. So you use less resources if you are in administering or undertaking a study on a sample of the entire population rather than if you are to undertake a study on the entire population. For instance, you will use less money to undertake or to do photocopies of that could be given photocopies of questionnaires to be given to 300 students compared to doing photocopies for 100,000 students. You will also need fewer research assistants to administer questionnaires to 300 students instead of 100,000 students. You will also need lesser time to analyze data from 300 students rather than 100,000 students. So we are check sampling so that we use less resources. However, the desire to use less resources should not compromise the quality of the sample that we come up with. So that even as we desire to spend less time and spend less money in research, that should not be done at the expense of having quality results and quality findings. The other reason why we use sampling is because it is not only easier in terms of time and resource savings, but it is also easier to collect data using a sample than the entire population. 
because when you engage a smaller group or a smaller portion of the entire population, it gives you enough time to engage one person for a fairly reasonable time. And in that process, you are able to collect more in-depth information using a sample other than the entire population. So it is easier for researchers to collect in-depth and more detailed information using sampling rather than sensors. However, uh, as we observed earlier, if the population is fairly small that can be managed fairly, then again, sensors would be preferred. The other reason why we use, uh, why it is important for us to detect sampling is that that one of generalization. For instance, if 300 people or respondents can give you information that even 100,000 students could have given you, then there is no need of engaging the entire uh, 100,000 students. Because the information given to you by the 300 students is still representative information that could have, as well, you could have obtained from the 100,000 students. For instance, if you suspect to be suffering from malaria and you seek medication and the doctor decides to send you to the lab to test you for malaria, the doctor, the lab technician only takes a small portion of the blood and once that blood tests positive or negative for malaria, then that gives him or have the information of the status with regard to that disease. So the doctor doesn't need, or the, the lab technician doesn't need to be drained the entire blood flow from, from your body to ascertain whether or not you have malaria. So if it is possible to get information from a smaller sample, and that information can be generalized to the entire population, then we undergo or we, we, we take the root of something and therefore we use something method for purposes of generalization. I wish also to state that research is not only expressive, it is also time uh, consuming and that's why all efforts are made to ensure that resources are properly utilized and the time is properly utilized and therefore for that matter sampling is done so that we both utilize the resources and the time better the other issue that we need to look at is what are the broader types of sampling there are two broader types of sampling one we have what we call probability sampling the other one we call non probability sampling Probability sampling is a sampling method in which every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected to constitute the study sample. Now, probability sampling, on the other hand, is a sampling technique in which not every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected in the sample. In other words, in non probability sampling, some members of the population have higher chances in being part of the sample, while others have fewer chances of being part of the sample. In our next discussion, we shall look at the various types of uh, probability sampling and also the various types of non probability sampling. Which ones are suitable for which study? and what critical decisions are that, that a researcher needs to make while deciding on which type of sampling method to adopt for the study. Thank you for listening to me.